fresh off eating an entire cake. Pretty much an entire ice cream cake. Gotta water my plants real quick. It's been a crazy few weeks and uh you know you know what you guys are about to witness here? Besides besides me drowning my plate uh my plants. I changed up my podcast microphone. I was showing it to my girlfriend. This one's the hardest one to, to uh, water. If I tilt it. <clears throat> it should work. There you go. I love these things, man. I love having plants in my podcast room. It's so nice. That should be good. Should be good. I hope it's good. I really don't want these plants to die. It's cactuses. That's why I got them. I got myself plants that are like the hardest ones to kill. <coughs> but uh, yeah, man, it's been a uh, it's been quite a week. It's been not even a week, dude. It's been a quite a few months, man. I, I've just been running nonstop lately, and I haven't really had time to sit down. And that was way too much water for cactuses. I think. We're just going to stop there. Yeah, dude, it's been, a lot's been going on. It's been busy, which is good, right? You know, I like busy. I'd much rather be busy than not be busy. I mean, that's how I look at it, but that's just me. Just, uh, so, these past few months have been busy. Like, just a lot going on. A lot of stuff that I was aware of, but I wasn't fully aware of how much um, bandwidth it was taking from my mind, from my brain, from my ability to, I had, I was being pulled in so many different directions or, you know, not even, but I had something that I really wanted to get done and I really wanted to accomplish. Uh, I have my, my camera right now set up on a good tripod and this is my issue like my OCD has been really bad lately and I it's been it's been really bad like I've been keeping like I had my old tripod I even though it's shitty it's like broken so the legs just go out too far I just didn't feel like changing it because I even though it wasn't working I I had it set up the best way possible which still wasn't good because it was broken. Even though I have this new tri, I have this tripod in my car. It's not brand new, but it works. It actually stands up and doesn't fall mid podcast, and it works. And I just didn't feel like changing it because I had it. I had duct tape on the floor lined up for each one of the three legs to be set up on, and just other things like I've been. I, yeah, I mean, you can hear right now. I just a lot like this podcast. This episode is basically just going to be me debriefing my own brain, just. I've been getting so much positive feedback on this. <laughs> so much positive feedback, especially the episode you guys saw with my mother. I think that was episode 13. I mean, we're on episode 15 already, and I'm trying to do a podcast every other day, and it's not that hard. That's the thing. It's just not that difficult to do. It's just the, I guess the editing is the hardest part, but just talking is not hard. I guess the hardest part I have is trying to get everything I have that's going on up here and putting it out on a podcast without rambling too much without, but, but I think the rambling kind of makes the podcast the way it is. Like every positive comment I get is I love the conversation style. Um, I love the way you're just talking and you cover so many topics. And that was the whole goal of the podcast. And, you know, it feels so great to finally, I guess have recognition about that. Like, because that's what I wanted with this. I didn't want any specific topic idea. I didn't want. I didn't want to have to not say anything. And I've had people say, "Well, you know, sometimes you watch what you say," and I do. I do watch what I say because sometimes I don't want to say something because I don't because it doesn't even make sense to me. And I do watch what I say sometimes, um, but the podcast. I would say 98% of the time I just say it. And I think that's kind of the goal with this podcast. So to see that finally just 
taking few fruition tuition tuition is what I pay for school, not the word I'm looking for. Fruition, I don't know. But just watch it blossom and actually developing something. It's just so beautiful. I, I feel like it's the equivalent of like having like a baby and like raising them. Um, that's how I feel right now. And it's such such a nice feeling to see that this was just an idea and now we're on episode fifteen and you know, the video is doing a lot better, obviously. Uh, the audio is not doing as well, but it's still getting listens, and that's amazing for me. Um, and I think the reason why it's amazing is because it just shows to me more than anything that people appreciate honesty and people appreciate just other people. And I think if you don't have a topic, the first thought is, well, what are you talking about? And I think the next thought is once you go through the equation, you're like, oh, wait, nothing. Right. I mean, that's what your favorite conversations with people are always just conversations about randomness. Uh, but yeah, I, I just wanted to take the first seven minutes just not talking about this, but this is where we ended up uh, just saying thank you to everybody. I mean, we're 15 episodes in and I I was I started at a time that was probably the worst time to start it. I started the podcast right when I started training for my personal training test. Um, right when I started applying to school, once I stopped going to therapy, um, once we were getting ready to uh, put Taylor back into school and just a lot of like transition was going on, but I still knew I had to do the podcast. And I think I started it at that time because that is when I felt like I was most honest with myself and I was most open, most vulnerable. And that's the point of this. I want to be vulnerable. I want to share as much as I can without sharing too much and, you know, hurting things around me. But I am, I'm very honest on here. And, you know, my thing is if you're going to listen to the podcast for a certain amount of time, you make it the distance, then you won't be upset with me, right? I mean, if you're giving me that much time and I was explaining this to somebody, you know, people are always so concerned about what people think about them. But, you know, if someone is willing to stay with you and listen to what you have to say for so long, dude, I mean, you could, they're not, they're not a hater, right? I mean, maybe they are, but maybe they're crazy, but... Um, I love this and I, I love this little community. I mean, the YouTube channel is going, growing again. It, it took a big cut because I wasn't, you know, uploading vlogs, which is what this channel used to be. Um, and I'm still going to do that hopefully in the, in the future, maybe not the near future, but, uh, this podcast is just going to, this episode is just going to be me trying to survive and get out what I want to say. Thank you for everybody and everyone sharing it and everybody commenting on it and just sharing love uh liking subscribing positive messages every day uh the guest will be appearing um i unfortunately can't do the one that i wanted to do with the person uh just schedule conflict which sucks ass because he's a really good friend of mine and he, if he's watching um steven i mean he knows that he's one of my best friends I haven't seen him in a while and it's one of those things that it sucks but uh, he's, he's, he's one of my best friends. And I've said, I've said many times that I, and when I do get married, I would you know, love to have him next to me at the wedding. Just one of those guys, you know, one of those people, you know, we all know those people that just, they've always been there for you. And I've always been there for him. And, you know, sometimes you don't need to see each other all the time. And I try to explain what a best friend is to people, especially guys. I don't know how it is for girls, but guys are different. I mean, guy best friends are like... I don't have to see you all the time, but when I do see you, you're going to help me, you know, and I almost expect that. And then they expect it from me. And I, I would, uh, I would do anything for that, uh, to that, for that person, for, for him, for Steven, I would do anything for him. And, and, uh, yeah, but I can't, I, we can't get on this week. He will be on, uh, soon, but, um, We'll be having my buddy Charles on here shortly. Who's a lifelong friend. I mean, definitely is going to be at the wedding. Uh, I'm acting like the wedding's right around the corner. It's not right around the corner. Um, but I'm just, that's kind of like my analogy. Uh, but yeah, he's going to be on the podcast. We're gonna, just going to cut the shit. Maybe have a few drinks Friday night, cut the shit, hang out. Hopefully we don't drink too much where we knock down the deer head behind my head. But uh, yeah, man. Just good. Life's good right now. I, dude, I was looking at YouTube yesterday. And some video popped up from PewDiePie. And PewDiePie is a YouTuber. He's I think he started out on like Minecraft or whatever. Um, he, he started out, I, I don't know, Minecraft. And then 
he does vlogs and now he's it's so weird dude youtube is at a point now where you know i always look up net worth of celebrities it's i don't know why i do it i probably shouldn't do it but i i tend to do it all the time iced coffee man i've been getting smarter with the podcast i haven't been drinking hot coffee because these lights are hot i have two lights up here two studio lights highest quality not really but they're decent quality and uh I was like, why am I sweating so much? I'm like, well, I can't have the fan up all the way because it, then it blurs into the microphone. I can't have the door open because I don't want any outside noise, at least try to minimize it as much as possible. Plus, someone's going to try to come in, and if it's locked, then they're going to realize, uh, hopefully, there's a podcast going on. Nothing else crazy is happening. The door's locked. Don't want the windows open. Dog starts barking or, you know, cops pull somebody over or someone gets, you know, shot. <clears throat> um, so I got to keep it quiet in here which means I got to turn off and close all the things that would make it cool in here. Uh, but I was also drinking hot coffee like an idiot, plus these lights are really hot. Um, and my mom's actually the one who brought that up to me. She's like, well, the lights are on. I was like, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. They let, let off a lot of heat. Uh, so I had to add iced coffee, which is nice. We're getting into the colder years, colder months, where I, I don't know. I drink, I drink iced coffee year-round. But, the, you know, there's nothing better than a nice hot cup of coffee, like, once you wake up. But I love, like, cold coffee when I do, like, homework or anything or when I study. Uh, I also have lemonade underneath my left kneecap, which I messed up playing baseball a few weeks back. But uh, PewDiePie, sorry, PewDiePie, is this, he's a YouTuber. And, dude, I he... <laughs> you remember when YouTube was, like, a joke? You remember, Okay, so I was talking to Taylor a couple days ago. And I was like, do you remember when Instagram, like, do you remember when Instagram was just a filter? Like, Instagram used to be the medium to posting on Facebook. You know, you take a picture, and there's no filter apps because you didn't need filters because no one was posting pictures anywhere. So you would use Instagram, you would, you know, filter it, and then post it on uh, Facebook. If you go on my Instagram, I go back to 2013, but I don't, I, for some reason, I deleted a bunch of pictures. I'm like before that, which I, I don't, I wish I didn't do that. I wish I kept them, but I didn't. I ended up deleting them. And, uh, but that's kind of how YouTube was. YouTube was an absolute joke. And I actually started YouTube way back in the day. I'm talking, I was in middle school. I was in ninth grade. So was that 2011? 11, 12, 13, 14. I graduated. Yeah. So 11. Freshman year, I was on YouTube. I was doing commentaries for Call of Duty. And dude, at the time, YouTube was so easy to, first of all, so easy to grow on, like, and it was so easy to go viral, like, and, but the, vi the, the viral wasn't the, the return on your, on your virality, the virality, the viral, uh, viralness of your video wasn't as high because it just wasn't as many users on it. Um, because everybody was just going to YouTube, like watch cat videos and to show you like little crappy videos from like, uh, your phone, and stuff like that. Uh, and then I think Vine also, I think Vine, uh, helped a lot for YouTube because Vine allowed the, the world to understand what viral man meant, like, because Vine blew up overnight and then kind of relaxed a little bit. And then Pokemon Go came out. I'm reading a book right now. And the first, the first, uh, the first, literally like the first 10 words are Pokemon Go by this uh, genius, uh, you know, it's just a, he's a theoretical physicist, I think at the University of California, Berkeley, Berkeley, University of California, Berkeley, Berkeley University. And uh, he talks about Pokemon Go and just how many people were playing, like 600, 600 million people. There was 600 million users on the game, I think within the first month. Like that, that's, that's insane. That's like the return on your ability to go viral nowadays. But that's why YouTube used to grow so fast because there wasn't that many people on it. And the people that were on it with, from those people, there was nobody really producing content. So, so because people were just watching, it's like going to a movie theater, nobody's an actor in the movie. Everyone's just there to watch it. But now YouTube is, I don't know the percentages, but I do know it's a lot higher where the people watching it also have some content of their own. And that's because it's so easy to post on YouTube nowadays. Like YouTube bought some companies, some companies work with them where you could just like grab my iPhone, record something. And you can literally just go ahead and put it up on your uh, YouTube. And then, you know, phone, everything's just quality now. But PewDiePie is a dude who has 100, 
almost 100 million subscribers, which is insane to think about. Um, and you know what's even more insane to think about is that it took him years to do that, I assume. And it's insane to think about because then you have guys like Ninja, who's that uh, dude who did, uh, God damn, I can't believe I'm forgetting the name, but not Minecraft, uh, Fortnite. And he, I think he got like 4 million. And then he kind of went crazy when he had that, uh, he was shooting some stuff with uh, Drake. Obviously, that's going to always help you out whenever you're shooting anything with Drake. And I don't know. I was just like, dude, that's 100 million people. That's insane. I mean, that, I, I looked up his net worth and it was like 30 million. And that's just from doing YouTube, bro. Like, that's, like, <sighs> that just blew my mind that there's that many people. Like, I have a thousand subscribers. And that right there kind of makes my mind, like, go a little twisty. Because I've never done anything in front of a thousand people. I mean, there's no way in hell. Everyone I'm talking to right now probably haven't hasn't done a lot of things in front of a thousand people. That's a lot of people, bro. That's a lot of people. And to think that PewDiePie has a thousand times a thousand. Pull up my calculator. So if he did 1,000, like let's just say stand-up shows in front of a thousand people, he would have to do it a thousand times to get one million times that by a hundred. He would have to stand up in front of 1 million people 100 times and talk to get 100 million. Dude, that's insane, man. And you also got to think about the responsibility. Like, if you mess up a video, like, if you post something that's, like, controversial and you don't catch it. Like, I, if I upload something right now, like, I'm uploading this video as I'm doing this. Uh, I'm, up, I'm uploading episode 14 as I'm recording this one. If I upload that and 30 minutes go by, I can catch it and, like, take it down. You know, I could take it down if I said something really offensive or someone's like, hey, man, you know, like we could see your dick reflected in the mirror because I had my dick out. You know, someone could be like, hey, don't do that. Take, put, you know, put your dick back in your pants or take down the video at least or or block it out, censor it or, you know, only let people 18. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, dude, you if you mess up your pootie pie, you know, in 30 minutes go by. I'm sorry, dude. You're not fixing it. It's gone viral for a screen recording. You're done. You're done. That is, that's just so great. But then you could also upload a video the next, the next video, like apologizing. It won't get as much love, but even if you lose, what, 30 million people, you still have 70 million people watching on YouTube. I don't know. So that's, uh, that's crazy. It's a lot of people. That like makes me anxious just thinking about but yeah, man, it's been just a lot's been going on, dude. It's that personal training test. I I didn't realize how anxious or how much I didn't realize how much I cared. I didn't realize how much I cared about passing the test. That sounds bad. I wanted to pass this test so bad. I wanted to get ace personal training so bad because and that's American Council Exercise, which is like, I think, like one of the most credited uh, personal training uh, certifications out there. And I wanted it so bad, but I didn't want to admit to myself that I wanted it so bad. One of the things that happened to me as I was going through therapy is, is I was a lot of the things that I struggle with is this need to feel special. And that has allowed me to. Um, really close myself off to a lot of things and stunt my growth in so many different opportunities. Um, one of those being personal training. I should have been, I should have had a certification years ago, right? I work out every day. I love working out. I love helping people. I, I know a little bit of a little bit of anatomy, a little bit of physiology, at least about working out. I know how to listen to people, but I never wanted it. Why? And I talked to my therapist. I've talked to Taylor and a few other people. I think I, t I talked to my mother, my father about it. I didn't want to be like everybody else. You know, I didn't want to be like everybody else. I wanted to be the person where if I didn't make it, I could be like, oh, I didn't go to college or dude, I did it without even a certification. I always was so insecure about myself that I wanted so badly 
for other people to applaud me all the time. And it led me to a dark path. It led me down the path of <sighs> starting to hate myself because I knew I'm smart. Like I knew the whole time I shouldn't do that. I should just get a certification and I shouldn't care. It's not true either. It doesn't make me like everybody else. And even if it does, who gives a, like, who gives a fuck, right? It shouldn't matter because you're doing it for yourself. I'm doing it for myself. I love it. I love training. So I, I took it before and, and that, 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 uh, that quality, that, that characteristic that I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much done with now and I'm slowly getting over it and it sneaks in sometimes, but I'm slowly getting rid of it. Uh, but that quality has, it was so deadly because it worked, you know? And what do I mean by that? Like it worked at times. Like it, when I dropped out of college, I started this clothing company and it did a lot better than I expected anybody expected and then people were you know reaching out to me saying hey great job here great job there and then I got a business license for it then I got a website then I got athletes and it, it worked so it became dangerous because I was proving I was reinforcing the negative um, idea of what I was doing like it was a negative characteristic the overall picture was negative sometimes it was positive but it was reinforcing a bad habit like picking my fingernails um, so it was a deadly situation because it was working, but it ultimately didn't work because I was lying to myself. Right. So it's really hard to find any type of self-love and really to feel confident about whatever you're doing, because if you're just lying for yourself and you're doing it to just get other people's attention. And I didn't want to believe that, but I was right. I, I was the guy who said, I didn't care about what everyone thought about me. I didn't care about school. Like fuck school. Right. I don't need to go to school. <sighs> but now I'm looking back at that and I can, and I can sit here humbly or I can sit here slightly embarrassed, but I can sit here and I can say that was wrong, man. And if, and if you're in that situation, like don't do that to yourself. Like, 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 like you're, it's not embarrassing to have a college degree, man. It's not embarrassing to, to get a certification if everybody else has it, has it. I mean, fuck, man, get a certification, but be the best at it. Then people will pay attention, you know, and it's, it's, it was hard. It was really hard because I didn't, I didn't have anybody who stood up to me and like told me to fuck off. And even like my father, when he did, he was like, you know, I was just so stuck in my ways that it just didn't work. And then things had to happen and I had to hit, you know, the ground hard, man. Like an incoming meteorite. I just had to hit the ground super hard. And I did. And then I had to let down that ego. I had to let down that ego. And that ego is a fucking monster, dude. Oh, that ego. I mean, that ego is the root of all suffering. Most suffering in the world is due to that ego. And I was talking to one of my buddies yesterday. And when he comes on, we can talk about it again if he wants to, if he's up to it. He's going through a lot, but that ego, dude, it like sits in the back of your head and it keeps on telling you, Hey man, you know, you, it's all about you, bro. You know, it's all about you. Don't worry about anybody else. And then it gets reinforced with like an alpha mentality. Like, there's always people out there saying, like, be the alpha, be the alpha. If no one cares about you, fuck them. Fuck them, man. Move on. Fuck them. Like, why? Why fuck them? Like, don't do that. Why would you do that? Don't. If you have the opportunity, don't do that, man. And it's, it's a really, really dangerous place to be in. Because what happens is you peep, even though some people might think you're full of it, people will start migrating from you and then you get isolated because the only people around you are the people who are like alpha quotations and it's, it's all driven by that ego and the ego would never be cradled. It would never be good enough for yourself, right? And you got to understand that. And I had to understand that I'm never going to completely satisfy myself, my ego, but I can, I can always satisfy myself, right? Because if I feel fulfilled, I'm okay. That doesn't mean I will regress. I will keep progressing on everything I do, but it's okay to be okay. 
You know, it's okay to let people into your life. It's okay to be like everybody else. Because you're never going to be like everybody else. There's always this mentality. And this, <laughs> this is my mentality. And I don't know if it's always, but I know it was for me. So at the time, it was the truth. And I'm not embarrassed of it. And that's why I sit here and I talk about it. Because it's my truth. And it's what happened to me. It's how I felt. I know it can help people because I know I'm not the only one. Um, fuck, I forgot what I was saying. Yeah, you just you just sit there and 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 you just let things pass you by because you don't want to look weak. I mean, you don't want to look weak. You want to look strong all the time, and and you don't want to give in. You don't want people to think you're normal. You want people to think you're special. I wanted to. I wanted people to think I was special because I feel like maybe as a child, I never felt like I got that. Um, and I'm not blaming anybody. And I'm just, ta- I'm just thinking right now. I don't know where it came from, but it was there and that's what it was. I wanted everyone to give me a high five. I think a lot of it has to do with my weight. I didn't, I wasn't looked upon when I was heavy. Uh, I wanted that attention so I always had to do something that was so radical to get that attention. Um, and then once I lost the weight, I still had that mentality. You know, I still had that four-year-old mentality where I wanted people to pay attention to me. Um, I wanted affirmation that I was there, that that you noticed me, that you saw me. And the older I got, the more I was losing weight, the more muscle I was putting on. It was still there and it never went away. But it it grew another head and it turned into something else, man. It turned into um, trying to elevate myself above people. But nobody else cared. It was only me and I didn't understand that. I thought when people complimented me, they actually gave a fuck. And nobody does, right? And it's not anybody's job to. They're not supposed to. And it's totally okay to just be yourself. Be normal. I mean, even if, even with that certification, even with, um, I did pass and I will get into that. Um, even with having a college degree, dude, there's people with college degrees who are locked up for triple homicide, you know? And then there's people, and I'm not saying that makes you a good person, a bad person, but I'm just saying there's also people with college degrees who, you know, go to soup kitchens every weekend. So it's what you do with it. And I didn't understand that, man. I didn't understand you can get a certification in a degree and run a business on the side. I thought you had to put everything into one thing. And that was from a bunch of bullshit from things I watched the things I heard from the alpha mentalities. I was fed that it was all or nothing. And if you failed, it doesn't matter. Just get back up on your feet, but then you neglect the soft part of your body, the soft part of your soul. You start neglecting people. People look at you like you're an asshole. Like, what do you mean, dude? I just get like, what about me? Do you not care about me? Then people start leaving. And then, then you continue saying, oh, I don't care. I don't care about you. I don't care. Whatever. Get out of here. But then everyone's gone, dude. And then you look around and there's nobody there. And boom, your ego is there. And your ego won, dude. You won. You didn't win. Your ego beat you. And now you're like, I want to. I, I, fuck, dude. Damn it. Damn it, dude. I'm pissed. I'm lonely, dude. You know, I was lonely, dude. I was. I was so sad. I was so sad, bro. And I was so sad because I wanted to do well for people so people could eat the words when they made fun of me when I was younger. Could people so people could look at me and like worship me. And I'm not proud of it, dude. I'm embarrassed about it. And as you can see, I'm like literally sinking into my chair because I am. I'm embarrassed about it, dude. I hurt so many people. I said so many wrong things out of spite. And out of insecurity, out of that alpha, out of that ego. And, you know, I had to, I had to hit rock bottom. I had to be lonely. I had to lose the one person in my life that gave me a chance times a thousand. You know? Sorry about that. Got him back. Deserve it? I don't know. I'm trying to prove that every day. Um, but if you're out there and you're always trying to make yourself seen, dude, just stand up, put your chest out. 
it's all right there. You have it. You are seen. And it's so cheesy, but there's nobody else on this planet like you, right? Go out there, capitalize on all on your characteristics, capitalize on your passions, show people you care about them, smile when you see people, hold the door for people, say thank you when when someone does something for you. S- say something nice to somebody, even if they're being an asshole to you. Just be a good person. And don't try to feel special because you will be quote unquote unique or different if you just find what you love and you do it to the best ability that you can. And if it's not there, you will carve that shit out. You know, that's why I like Joe Rogan so much is he's been able to do that. He has only done what he loved and has just talked about it and talked about it and talked about it. And people love that, not because they love what he loves, but because people love to see other people so passionate and and into what they are into. I mean, that that's that's a very um, addictive thing, right? You know, uh, if you watch somebody who's amazing at football, dude, you may not be good at football, but you're going to be like, fuck, dude, they love football. Maybe I can love to play the trombone just as much as they do. I do like playing the trombone. You know, they love football that much, dude. I love playing the trombone that much. Whatever that is, that you have that. So take that and run with that. Um, but yeah, dude, I'm wearing this shirt. You know, this is a school I go to, and embarrassed many, many, many times to even put this shit on. I was so embarrassed about it. I was so ashamed that I fell into the tr- quote unquote trap that everyone else did that I would wear this shirt only when I was indoors. But not like at public um, because I liked it, but I didn't want to like it because I didn't want to like it. I didn't want to like going to I didn't like going to class and seeing everybody else pay attention to the teacher because I thought everyone else was stupid and nobody had their own personality. No one had their own mentality. But now I'm sitting here right now in front of you on episode 15 of the Michael Lab show. Narcissistic asshole. Love that name. <laughs> um, the reason why I chose that name is because I didn't want to choose a name that kind of ab- like outlined what the the podcast was about because I didn't know what the podcast was going to be about. So I like that one and it's easy to allow people to just come on. I don't have a- anyways. Now I'm, I'm in this, this is the point. This is what I'm trying to get through to this podcast through this episode is that dude, I'm so happy for right now. I've been so emotional these past 48 hours and I'm recording this on August, August 20th, dude. And you're probably seeing this August 24th or August 25th or whatever, or August 22nd. But dude, I'm so emotional right now. Um, as I'm filming this on August 20, 20, 20th at two o'clock, things have just been going so well, man. If you guys saw that Instagram post I made about Taylor, dude, that shit is everything I said was true, man. Things have been just going so well. And, I used to get scared with things were going well because I knew things were going to fall apart. But I think every time things go well, you you don't you don't sit back and you say, "Well, it's going to fall apart." You're more prepared for it. You know it's going to happen, but you're more ready for it. It's like uh you have more of a shield. You know, your skin's thicker. Your shield's stronger. Um is it well? You know, things will fall apart and, you know, Taylor will go to college and I'll only be able to see her every other weekend. And that's going to bum me out. And there's going to be days when I'm sad, days when I'm not sad. But what her and I have been able to accomplish these, this past year, dude, it's almost, almost been three years. It's incredible. Because everything I said in that post is just so true. It's hard to tell somebody that they're being a fucking idiot. Especially when you love them. Because you don't want to hurt them. And it's a delayed investment, right? Because it's going to be hard for a while. I mean, I've said things to her and I've said things to people. Best friends of mine, dude. You say things that they don't want to fucking hear, bro. I didn't want to hear that I was being a fucking pussy for... I don't mean that as in being a pussy is bad. I'm saying that... Uh, I guess I guess it is, but you know what I mean. I didn't... I didn't want to be told you're being a bitch. Because you are talking about this clothing company, but you don't have anything. Um, you know, I didn't want to be told I was closed-minded or 
that I had a lot of issues that I had to figure out before I could ever be with somebody. But I had to be, dude. And that that takes a powerful person. So I'm sitting here recording this episode. <sighs> Two years ago, dropped out of school. Two years ago, confused, doing nothing with my life. Working working at a restaurant that I loved the people there. I loved the job, but it wasn't going to be a future of mine. And I knew that. And I think that, that people working there knew that. I knew that. Um In a relationship that I could never, that I wanted so bad, but I could never open my wings enough to make it as good as it could have been. It was great, and it is great, but at the time, it just wasn't good enough. But I thought it was everything. And now I'm sitting here today with, back in school, dude, proud to be at Towson. A lot of it has to do with reading books, too. It's given me a sense of identity. It's given me a sense of pride. Um, back at school, my GPA, I, I, I'm as if I was going for the uh, to get into the program right now, I wouldn't be able to get into the business program. That's how bad my GPA is because I dropped out of school. I didn't drop my classes, so I failed at everything. <sighs> you know, but I'm so happy that I'm back in school, doing something that I want to do. I love business, but more than anything, I just love learning. And I'm allowing myself to love learning. I've always loved learning. Always have. Never wanted to. I thought it was a weakness. But it's actually a strength. Because I think people want to learn because they see how enthusiastic I am about it. You know? Um, that's pretty powerful. Not many people get that opportunity. Uh yeah, so back in school, dude, I'm so, I'm so excited. I'm so sad because I can't do a tailor, but I'm so excited that I want to be in school. And I'm also paying for it, dude, which makes me happy. It's going to be hard, dude. Sometimes I have no, sometimes I have zero dollars in my bank account and like a hundred in my savings. And then like a little bit in my CD account that I can't even take out to March 2020. But that's okay, right? I don't know, but... It is what it is, and uh, I don't know. I'm just happy to finally be in school and be in a place where I want to be there. I, um, I like Towson. It's a cool school. You know, it's not my dream school, but I, don't, I never had a dream school. I was a kid in high school. I never filled out a college application. The only college application, I swear to God, all my life, only college application I ever filled out, it was 11.20-something p.m., uh, college applications for Towson would do in 40 minutes unless, and after that you weren't going to even be, uh, they wouldn't even look at your application. And I just got done having an argument with my parents about my future, uh, because I was already after like community college sign up, So I just didn't sign up for those. I was working, you know, 60 hours a week at the restaurant making fine money, but I had my feet in the mud, uh, quicksand just sinking down and Taylor was, you know. She didn't say anything because she didn't know me well enough. And, and I guess I really convinced her that this is what I wanted. But I filled out that the only application I filled out was 1120, sent it in, got accepted, dropped out six months later. But now I'm in school because I want to be in school. And I passed my personal training test, which I didn't realize how nervous I was about that. Dude, I was so nervous, man. <laughs> like looking back at it now. Your head almost, my dear head almost fell off on the podcast. Let me fix it before it does fall off. Sorry about that intermission. I think falls off all the time. I gotta. I gotta fix it. What was I saying? Oh yeah, I didn't realize like how nervous I was, but I was, dude, I was so nervous. And you know how I know I was so nervous is that afterwards, as I was like, as I was hitting submit the test because I knew I passed it, like as I was taking it. Yeah, having a guest on the podcast is really nice because you can drink. Your drinks without worrying about, you know, pausing. Because, dude, 
when you talk for an hour, hour, 15 minutes, it can be hard. Not like for me, it's not hard to come up with topics or anything. Uh, because I always, my stupid face always has something to say. <laughs> um, but like the issue with me is that I can't get my mic to work. But no, the issue with me is that the uh, I feel bad for not like being able to talk while I'm drinking my drink. So that kind of makes me feel like feel like a bad podcaster. But I'm also not a great podcaster, so. Uh, but yeah, so I just like, I was so nervous about the test, I didn't realize it. And then I, I was so nervous to, to to turn it in or hit submit and quiz uh, score it. But then when I saw that, it said congratulations. It was the first time in my life where I actually ever took a test where I wanted to do well on it. Like, I cared, you know? I've never taken a test. Even people are like, what about your SATs? I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? You think I finished my SATs? Look at my SAT scores. They're horrible, dude. Like, I might have, like, done... I didn't do all the questions. I definitely didn't do all the questions, but I didn't care. My advanced placement college courses in in high school, dude, I didn't care. The final exams, I didn't care. No, but I cared about this. And it's the first thing in my life I've ever actually really studied for. Like, I studied, man. I didn't study... I mean, I still only studied for the last month and a half. And ACE recommends, I think, like, I don't know, six to 12 months or like three to six months, three to eight months. It's a long time. It's like at least six months. And uh, I didn't do that, but I studied and I passed and I did it. No one else did it for me. I did it. And I was so proud about that. I don't know. It was a sense of accomplishment that I've never felt before. And I'm just so relieved I have it. And I was just the first thing I thought, God, I'm such a nerd. The first thing I thought once I finished it, I was like, okay, we can focus on school because I have it. And I probably won't be training for a little bit just because I got to balance out my life. Like I'm finally t- practicing self-care. Like I'm finally like at the point where I'm recognizing that I need to do things for myself. I need to make time for my family. I need to love people. I can't just work all day. I don't remember a time since I was 15 where I haven't worked all week. I work all the time. I've always worked. I've been working for the past seven years of my life, soon to be eight, and full time, 40 hours a week when I was 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, turning 23 here in about a month. Um, But it feels good that I have a qualification that's actually credible and actually matters. And I did it, man. I felt so good afterwards, man. I felt like I was on cloud nine. And I don't know. It was just a cool feeling because I did it. And no one else did it for me. And, uh, yeah, so that happened. Um, just been, but it's been emotional because that, I didn't realize how much it was stressing me out. It just felt like a world was lifting off the, lifted off my shoulders. The world was lifted off my shoulders. Is that the reference? I think that's the reference. The world was lifted off my back. I don't know. And then Taylor and I are doing great. She's a powerful woman. She's that woman who doesn't need me, but she wants to have me in her life. So it's like pretty fucking cool. But it's also kind of scary because uh, she doesn't need me. Like she can she can do a lot by herself. <laughs> She's fully capable of that. So I got to watch my step, right? Got to watch what I'm doing all the time. And a best friend. And, you know, there's friends around me and there's family around me and things just seem okay. The world seems okay and the world hasn't always seemed okay to me. I always feel like it was me versus somebody or something. Me versus me. That shit works sometimes. That's the, that's the hardest part is it does work sometimes. And if you're, that per, if you're in that spot right now, if you're young and you're just angry and you don't know why you're angry, just... Just... Try just force a smile on yourself. Just force a grin. Force a just smile more. Um, because things don't all life is not like that. That's the reality, and the reality is, is death is upon us all. You know, that's what's crazy about this little trip we're all on. Is that, I mean, if you really think about it. The only purpose we have is to 
have sex and pass down her genes and die, raise raise the offspring. I mean, really, for guys, it's not even like your job's not really to raise the offspring. And I hope, I gotta hope I didn't offend everybody right there. But it's true, though. I mean, in nature, it's not. I mean, there's some there's some species like, like freaking, like uh, grasshop or not grass, praying mantises, where like right when the dude busts a nut, like right when he does, she the 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 the, the praying mantis lady, she's like she chops his fucking head off. So so could you imagine nutting, and then getting your freaking head chopped off? Some species don't even don't even want to do it around, you know. But this this isn't going to be a bi, uh, a crazy brain mind fuck podcast. Maybe it could be. We still have a while to go, twenty minutes to go. So it could be. But uh, yeah, man, death is upon us all. But that's a beautiful thing. I think that's a beautiful thing that death is upon us all. Yeah, man. But there's been this weird just feeling of momentum that I've been that I've had experience lately of just a routine and a mom, the momentum is uh, it's it's a very it's an interesting thing because you want it, right? We all want that feeling of accomplishments and we all want that feeling of success. But the only way you get it is when you have a wave of momentum, you just stay on it for as long as possible and you make the most of it. It's like a surfer, I guess. Like when you get on a wave that's huge, you want to do as much time on the wave as possible, right? Because it's so big, it's going to take you as long as possible, but you don't want to fall off. You know, you want to stay on it. You want to stay on the wave because a wave could kill you, right? The momentum could hurt you. If you if you don't stay on it and you fall off, if you fall off because you jump off, that's on you. You wouldn't do that. That's stupid. So don't do that with momentum. You wouldn't do that with wave. If you accidentally fall off, you know, it could still hurt you, you know, but when you're on it, you got to take advantage of it. And that's where I've kind of been. I feel like I'm, I'm, I, I, f- I feel it, dude. I feel the momentum just inside of me and just, just going and going and going. And I don't know where the end destination is, but getting that certification is like, and I've been saying this, to everybody, and I'm, I'm so okay with saying this because, um, this is what I want. I don't want to be a neurosurgeon, but I feel like getting this certification for me at least is like a neurosurgeon on the last day of residency. And they could just be a nurse on the next day. That's how I feel. Like, I feel like I can be a personal trainer. There's a lot more I have to learn, but I have the ticket to get on the train. And I feel like I'm part of something. I never, <laughs> my whole life, I've never felt like I've been part of anything because I've always chosen not to. Because I've always looked down upon groups and I've always looked down upon people who've been, who, who self-identify with a group or with anything. You know, and I don't do that still to this day, but this is the one thing where I'm like, I'm happy to be part of this group of personal trainers, not just ACE, but just personal training in general. And I love that I actually learned, like, I'm so excited to just keep on learning every day about human anatomy and physiology. And I love reading brain about the brain. There's just so many things I love that I just didn't want to, because I didn't want to look weak to the average person. But you know what, man? Fuck that shit, right? Find what you love. Do what you love. Do it every day. Damn, dude. Do that shit every day. And don't stop when people want you to stop. Keep going. Keep moving. Keep things going. I'm not going to keep going in this podcast, guys. I'm going to bring this podcast to an end. It's gone quick. It's a 50-minute podcast. And I feel like I got everything. I don't want to ramble on. But I feel like I got my point across that, you know, when momentum is there, stay on it. PewDiePie has a lot of subscribers. If you feel like you have to be something special, 
Let's think about that. Let's let's analyze that. Let's find some pride in yourself. The goal is not to get people to hate you. The goal is to love yourself. And then what people do with that is up to them. But the first goal you should have is to really be able to look at yourself and not be disgusted with yourself. I used to be so disgusted when I saw myself in the mirror. I would lie to myself. And the first person that would call me out on it was myself. But guess what? I call myself out on myself calling myself out. Like, you're a liar, Mike. Get the fuck, like, shut the fuck up. You're fine, dude. You're doing great, man. You're doing great. Who cares? Fuck everybody else, dude. That's some nonsense, dude. Get out of here with that shit. That's just so 2018, bro. <laughs> Seriously. It's stupid. Stupid. It's stupid, man. Stupid. Stupid. Dude, I admit, I wanted to ask my, my mom about her, her granddad. Or her dad. I didn't really, I think I dug into it a little bit. Anyways, I'm, oh, my dad too is going to be on the podcast. Now that should be interesting. And also I'm going to do the podcast like this. I think what we're going to do is have like this stand here. And then I think I'm going to add a, I'm going to get another arm sooner or later. So I could put it on the other side and have the chair there. And then just move the camera back, put new pieces of duct tape so we can have a larger view. I think that would be nice. I think that would be a cool setup. Oh, I also, <laughs> I took my juicy fruit gum. I moved it, and then I placed the Boston Red Sox hat, which I, I don't, I'm not even, like, a huge fan of the Boston Red Sox. I just played Little League Baseball, I think, for five years in a row where we had the Boston Red Sox team, so I felt like that was kind of destined for me. And I have a Bruce Springsteen album right there, um, which I don't know if I should have that up here, but it was kind of just, like, collecting dust, so I kind of took it. Do I like Bruce Springsteen? Yeah. Is he my favorite? No. Does it look cool? Yeah. Did I do it just for the show? Yes. I did. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I like my setup, guys. I love this. I, I didn't even mention that. I love this podcast, dude. It's been, it's, the, it's the greatest decision I have not ever made, but it's one of the decisions that I didn't, didn't think other people would understand, but I didn't give a fuck. So I just did it, dude. And I'm so happy that I did because the feedback's been great. Um, but yeah, guys, this has been episode 15, hundreds and hundreds of more going to be coming out. Thousands would be the ultimate goal. But right now, the ultimate goal is for me to shower, clean myself up because I smell like crap. I went to the gym, um, read my book, Elastic Mind, and just relax, think about life, and get this video uploaded on YouTube for episode 14. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a beautiful day. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like, comment, subscribe. Check out www dot silence fitness s i l e n c e f i t n e s s dot com use a discount code 10 t e n at checkout to get yourself a discounted price 10 percent off your entire order if you do get 75 dollars more of clothing you do get free shipping it's shipped right out of my basement so that's awesome um so that's if you guys are watching on youtube please like comment subscribe uh, also, tell your friends and family about it. If you guys are watching this on a major audio podcast platform, such as Apple Podcast, uh, SoundCloud, or Spotify, please leave it a comment, rate it there. Um, but yeah, guys, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end episode 15 right here. Guys, have yourself a beautiful week. Thank you so much for putting up with my stupid voice for the past hour. Have yourself a great, great day.